Hello and welcome. A couple of months ago, I found this weird little bike for free by the side of the road. I couldn't resist, so I loaded it up and brought it home. It's an FS Elite Black River Canyon 3 steel frame, old school, rigid mountain bike. The bike's frame and stock handlebar are painted with a really dense feeling pebble textured paint. That is partly what makes it weird, but more on the weirdness later. First, let's go over the basics. The geometry and components suggest that it dates back to oh, maybe the mid to late 1980s. The thing is, I found absolutely nothing online about this bike. The closest I found was a Google hit on a 1990s Sears FS Elite cruiser bike. FS may then stand for Free Spirit, Sears house brand bikes for a long time. So my best guess, and I do stress the word guess, is that this was a Sears bike. The bike has an interesting mix of components. The riveted 3x chain rings are attached to a one-piece crank of the style once common on beach cruises and still occasionally found on bikes like Huffy Cranbrook's and on some BMX bikes. The bottom bracket is the large diameter so-called American style. The rest of the drivetrain is comprised of a 7-speed Shimano freewheel which I installed in place of a stock no-name 6-speed. The front and rear derailers are both polished steel and alloy Shimano SIS units. The rear one attaches with a hook under the axle bolt, a bit of a throwback even in the 1980s. The chain is a new one, nothing special, it came from Walmart. The pedals are Union brand plastic flats, which really look too nice to be original. The wheels, front and rear, are single wall steel rims with unbranded hubs. They have what look to be made in USA decals, but the graphics and the text are faded. The bike had worn out lugged Innova brand mountain bike tires, a brand once sold by Kmart. I replaced the tires with good used SCCR 26 inch by one and a half inch tan walls that I had on hand. These tires have nice all-purpose treads on them and I chose them because I'm not sure that mountain biking would be the best use for this bike. The braking surfaces, well, they still need some tuning up. Brakes, front and rear, are low-end side pull caliper units on which I installed new pads and cables. The pads that were on them were worn almost down to the metal housings. And in fact, the stock rear brake caliper was mangled on two axes, so I replaced it with a new spare from my parts bin. The cockpit consists of a one-piece quill stem and a 24.5 millimeter diameter steel handlebar. The stock flat handlebar was only 560 millimeters wide. I mean, yeah, that might be okay for a little kid's bike but not an adult's bike. So I dug into my parts bin and I came up with a 620 millimeter bar with a slight rise. Not as good as a modern 780 millimeter alloy unit, but still an improvement. I serviced the head tube bearings, which were in good condition, but the grease was pretty dirty. I replaced the stock no-name grip shifters with easy fire knockoff combo shifters that I got from wish.com last year. <laughs> and ju just for fun, I put on a set of bright yellow slip on grips that I had on hand. The final component is a Schwinn saddle on the stock steel seat post. I was a little surprised that the bike has an integrated seat post clamp like those that are usually found on higher end bikes. I expected instead a nut and a bolt, or at best a quick release clamp. Just another unexpected feature of this weird little bike. Speaking of which, here is why I find this bike to be a bit weird. 
the frame. The top tube is oval in cross section. The long axis of the oval is oriented vertically and the shape extends from the head tube to the seat tube in that direction. But that's not all. The down tube is also ovalized, but the long axis begins as horizontal on the head tube and twists to vertical by the time it connects to the seat tube. And finally, the seat stays start as one round tube on the seat tube and flattens out a little bit where the brake mounts. The rest of the seat stays are one continuous tube with sort of a hairpin shape. I'm sure that there are other bikes out there with similar seat stays and oval tubes, but this is the first I've seen in person and that it is on a bike that has this curious mix of cheap and not so cheap components. That's the weird part. One other thing, this bike was made in the United States. That surely makes it a vintage bike. And the sticker on the seat tube says FS Elite, number one in quality, service and value. I am not sure that I would want to ride this bike on anything tougher than the greenest mountain bike trail. But having test ridden it, I think it would make a really nice bike to tool around town on. If you enjoyed this video, there's a link to a vintage bike playlist below left and there's a link to another video below right that I think you'll like. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate that. Goodbye and have a great day.